the session. Okay, we're going to start recording. And uh, shortly here, I will start. Dave has a really cool saw that's painted with a pretty scene on it. I think Dave must be in the Northwest. Are you in the Northwest? No? Michigan. Michigan, okay. We got, we got three Michigan area coordinators on here. All right. All right. If you are a, um, like you want to say mentor, <laughs> um, monitor, if you would go into the chat and sign in, we would appreciate it. And we're going to go ahead and get started. Welcome, everybody. We're glad you're here. We're almost to the finish line. The big day is going to be here very shortly. And we appreciate you joining us and learning and being with us. We understand that it's a sacrifice that you have willingly made to help your kids in your area uh, as they study their Bibles. And we appreciate you giving your time and your energy uh, to this endeavor. Um, I'd like to start with prayer. And uh, if we will bow our heads. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for today. We thank you for being with us. As we go into this meeting, help our minds to be clear, that the instructions be understood, that we can do the very best for our kids so that Sabbath is a glorious day for them and they understand that you love them and care for them and that you want them to study your word. In Jesus' name, amen. All righty. Well, I didn't do this yesterday, but I think I will. Key, will you wave? That's Key, he's on the tech team. He does our Nearpod and uh, some of our other technical things. We have Nadine, if uh, you would wave. She does basically anything we ask her to. <laughs> she's a, and she's gonna be managing our chat today. Um, and I think Sherilyn's on. Yeah, Sherilyn is here. She's driving. She will, she's on our tech team also. She's uh, handling the judges and the judging section. Um, that's the three that I see that are here. The rest of us are all busy doing other things. We're a team of six that uh, are volunteers to help you, uh, help us all make this a successful endeavor. And my name is Marilyn Boismer, and uh, I'm here in Texas. But the scene behind me, if you can see, is Arizona, where I vacationed. So welcome, welcome. Um, first of all, I'm going to share my screen, and I want to show you a website. Uh, let's see here. This website is nadpbe.org. Okay. When you come into this website and the home page, you'll three see three buttons. But if you click on the about, let's see, there we go. On the far right you see where you can log in, okay? In the next couple of days, you will receive an email with your credentials. It is very, very important that you try those out and make sure you can get in. The email address that is being used in those credentials is the one that was registered. If you're registered as a monitor, that's the address, that's the email it's gonna use to let you in and it will let you into the monitor section, okay? There was those three buttons. The middle one was the monitor section. That's what'll let you in and that will have the things that you need to be successful, okay? The, the, inform the places you need to go, okay? So it's very important when you get that email and it should go out Wednesday night, Thursday, roughly. We have a lot of them to send out. So I don't know exactly when your particular one will go out, but if you don't have it by late on Thursday, drop me an email. We will see what happened to it. But look in your junk mail. If you have multiple email addresses and you're not sure what the conference used to register you, check all your different ones. I have been sending things out with that email. So if you've gotten an email from me, then I'm pretty sure that you're gonna be good. Uh, but if you're here because somebody else sent you the link and asked you to come to the meeting and you have not gotten an email from me, you need to start figuring out what has happened where the disconnect is so that you have your connectivity and you can get where you need to go in the website, okay? Now, in that area, when you get in, and it's not open yet, so I can't show it to you, there will be five chat spaces, okay? 
each of you will look for your union and go into that chat space. And we will talk with each other there and you will interact with our uh, monitor um, supervisors or facilitators um, if you have problems. What do you put in there? There's numerous things. When you first check in, which check-in is at 8.30 and we're gonna go into the schedule a little bit. When you first check in, you just say hello and what team you're with. So we can check you off. Yes, you're here. And then you're gonna go and do a few more things we'll cover later, but that's where you communicate. But we in the tech team has decided that everything needs to have a backup plan, all right? You don't have just the regular plan, you have a backup. So we wanna have a different chat space just in case there's problems. If the chat space on is too slow or people are having trouble connecting, we want a different chat space. But we haven't decided exactly which one to use yet because we need to know what you guys are comfortable with. So I'm gonna launch a poll and I would like you guys to answer this poll so we can get an idea of what you guys um, use. The one that says messenger, that's the messenger that's on your, uh, or iMessage that you have on your iPhone. It's called messenger on your computer, but it's the same uh, product. And you can pick more than one. If you, if you use all of them, click them all. If you're just joining us, go ahead and take the poll and then I'll give you some other instructions. All right, I'm gonna give it about another 10 seconds and then we're gonna quit. All right. And when we look at this, the most common one that people have is WhatsApp. So we will build a second communication vehicle with you guys in WhatsApp, all right? So that will be our backup plan for communicating with each other when there's a problem, all right? So things that go into your chat. When you're one of your team, if your team drops off or has a problem, needs help from our technical people, you would report it there. Um, you're having difficulties, you can uh, report it there. You may wanna put uh, the application on your phone and on, um, on your computer so that you have a backup. So think about how you're gonna backup things and how you're gonna do um, your communication, okay? One of the things you are is the advocate for the team, okay? You are there to make sure they're successful, right? You're not, you're there to make sure they follow the rules, but you want them to succeed. These kids have studied really, really hard. So you are going to be helping them accomplish that. So you are the central figure in this whole communication process, okay? If your team is in person, then you are in the same space they are. They'll your, the scribe will have logged into Nearpod and Key's gonna go into that in a little bit. Um, and then the audio can be done multiple ways. The audio will be coming through a webinar. That webinar is accessible through the um, NAD PBE website. In the monitor space, there'll be a link for that webinar. And it'll also be available in the Teams uh, section. So the church may want to broadcast that up on a big screen for the kids so the director can log in, get into the team section and broadcast it. But they may be counting on you for the audio and the visual. They may not have a big screen. Then you may be doing the audio. If you're doing the audio, you're going to do it on your phone because you cannot run, well, you could do it on your computer, but you're going to be doing something else on your computer. So you're probably going to want to do it on your phone and have two devices. Okay. Now, if you are virtual, you're going to need two devices for sure. Okay. If you're doing virtual, most of the teams are coming in via Zoom. You cannot run a Zoom web webinar 
and a Zoom session at the same time on the same computer. They, one will knock the other one off. So you will have your computer on the Zoom that the kids are using and the scribe will be sharing their screen which will show the uh, Nearpod and you will have your phone logged into the NADPBE site into the webinar and your audio from your phone, you put it next to the mic on your computer and the kids will hear the questions being read from your device. They will see them from the scribe's device, okay? Many of the unions have already done that, but if your union has not, you may wanna think about how that works. But most importantly, you need to talk to the club, the team you're working with. They may have a plan on how they're going to do this. And you want to make sure you have the technology they're expecting you to have, all right? So make sure you understand how you're going to be communicating and that you've worked out the details before the day. Bring your computer, bring your chargers, bring your phone, bring the charger. You might need an extension cord if you're not going to be at home. Now, for redundancy, you may want to have your phone doing it not through a router, doing it directly with the cell tower and your computer going through a router so you can switch if you need to, because you may need to use your phone as a hotspot. So think about how you're gonna stay connected because the testing does not stop. It keeps going, okay? So I'm gonna to get to our next, next thing. Each of you will receive, I believe tonight or tomorrow, a link that will take you to a Google Sheet like this. I need you guys to go in and make sure you can open it. And it is for the club. See here on row D, it needs to have the name of the club that you are uh, monitoring. You will be entering whatever they enter in Nearpod in here. You are their backup. If something isn't working, their Nearpod goes down, the questions don't stop but you've got audio on a different system. So they can hear the questions, they can tell you the answers and you can type them here. But you type them regardless whether they're typing in a Nearpod or not, you're always typing the answers. The judges will get the Nearpod that the kids put in and what you typed because sometimes the kids are in Nearpod, but what comes through Nearpod is garbled. If they accidentally hit a command key, an option key, a control key, um, if they, um, sometimes it just comes through in an unusual fashion where you can't read it, we'll be using your typed instruction, okay? So you type always the answer in this sheet and the judges will see it from here and the kids Nearpod will show up here. Now the judges will work off the Nearpod. That is what they wrote. But if it's illegible or missing, they'll go with what the monitor has typed in. Now, the, some people say, oh no, I'm doing virtual. How can I watch the kids and how can I type at the same time? You can have an assistant. You can have somebody else there to help with the typing, okay? It just needs to be somebody independent from the team. It can't be a team, you know, the parent or one of the kids, you know, it needs to be somebody independent who can help you. But you can bring them with you or they can do it remotely. Just figure out how you're gonna do typing. Cause some of you, I bet you are two finger typists and some of you are really good typists. <laughs> but you will do type in whatever the kids wrote in Nearpod. And if they are not writing in Nearpod cause it has gone down, whatever they say. Now, some uh, people say, well, what happens if I go down and I lose my connection to the sheet? Write it down on a piece of paper. As Soon as you come back up, you can start typing in the answers and catch up, okay? If too much time goes by, skip down to what they're doing now and later fill in, okay? Because that sheet doesn't have to be exactly in time, it has to be pretty close. The judges will be about, it was our experience, they're about eight questions behind the actual program, okay? They're judging at the same time as we're taking the test and they're doing the test. So they're about eight questions behind. And so they'll see your answers timely enough if you drop off and then have to jump back in. But don't wait till halftime and I'm gonna type all 45 at, at the intermission. 
that your answers will be missing from the judge's sheet. So if you need somebody to help you type, now's a good time to recruit if you don't have one. Many of your unions have already assigned two, okay? Many of the unions already assigned two to every, I, I've talked about six unions so far and they've all got two, all right? So, and one of the union has two and a half. They have two and then a supervisor for the two. <laughs> so they have like three uh, going on. So just be aware that you're gonna get a link to that sheet. Make sure you can go in. Now on the day of the event, you're gonna to want to do something for us. See how it says the word test here? We would like you to blank that out. That's a signal to us that you're ready to go, okay? So every sheet has the word test in this question one answer column. When you're in and you're good to go, please remove the word test and we will know your that sheet is ready to go, that you're connected, everything's gonna be fine. All right? Marilyn, Marilyn yes? can, can I break in for just a second? If you could go back to the spreadsheet just real quick. Okay. That you just had up. That one? Um, yeah. Just, <clears throat> pardon me. Um, so the way this is going to work, um, it doesn't really matter how big the cell is. As long as you're typing in, it's okay if it kind of overflows. Mm -hmm. Looks like it overflows into a different cell. The way we have the program, it will still pull all of that information and put it into the judging spreadsheet. So, and you'll be able to expand the cell or make it smaller if, if you'd like to see it all, but it overflows fine and it will take all of it. You are correct. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Good, good, good point. Good point. Okay. So you've got now two roles. You're probably providing the audio for the team and you're their backup recorder. Okay. That's two things you're doing in your Google Sheet. You're also the observer. You're the maintainer of the rules. So you make sure the kids are following the rules. Let's say you're doing, they're doing something that they shouldn't do, okay? They have an infraction. You give them a warning. Because like, if you're doing a virtual, they're supposed to have from the waist up on the camera and their hands invisible at all times, they may forget. And you just call them out and say, hey, I don't see your hands. Can you, you know, be there? They get a warning. But if it's a persistent problem at halftime, or at the end, you report the team and the infraction, and it will be sent to the committee, <laughs> and they will discuss what actions need to be taken. We hope that doesn't happen, that none of the teams have an issue, but it does happen. You are allowed to ask them to take their camera and show you the room. If you think that they're always looking off to a direction and seeing something and every, you, know, you think that looks a little suspicious, you have the right to have them show you the room. Um, but we want them to succeed. You don't want to badger them. You don't want to make them so nervous they can't answer anymore, <laughs> but they do need to follow the rules. But you report that at halftime and at the end. Now, there's another thing that you do. Let me show you this. You will be getting, well, actually it'll be on the website. There'll be a link to this. This is a challenge form. All of the questions are going to the judges. So they're automatically, the answers are challenged. But if the Pathfinder feels that the question has an issue, not the answer to the question, but the question itself has an issue, they can report that at halftime or at the end. But you're the one who fills out this form. So you'll in the uh, monitor section, there's gonna be a link for this form. You put their designation, which is, this number here in this corner, or also the name of the sheet, and also what they log into Nearpod, and Key's gonna show you that in a minute. Um, there, what union, conference, church, and club they're from, and then the number of the question they're challenging, and then they tell you what to write here. You don't make it up for them, they tell you why they think there's an issue. This goes into the databases and it will be given to the judges, for them to listen to the kids. And almost every single level, we've had at least one question that was legitimately questioned. Okay, they had a legitimate thing. If you have a, somebody's raising their hand. Um, if you would put it in the chat, your question, and then we'll get to it at the end, okay? Thank you. Um, let's see, where was I?
All right, Key, if you would show them what the kids need to do and what we want them to watch out for as far as getting into Nearpod. Okay. Um, hello, everybody. I am going to, we've already done a short uh, training session for the team's scribe. And I've given them, them this scribe checklist, but I wanted to provide this to all of you as well. Uh, I put a link in this, in the chat to the, um, the checklist. And I also embedded in the chat, the a PDF version of this. So, um, I wanted to go over two things, um, the schedule for the day or for the weekend and then the ch uh, checklist. So let me let's go do the schedule. Key. Okay, let's do the schedule after the go through the checklist. Cause I have some Got things it. to add to the schedule. Got it. Okay. So starting from the checklist, um, again, the scribes already have this checklist, but I wanted like kind of the theme is, um, backups. So, and you guys being the, um, kind of the advocate for the team. So even though t the teams already should have this information, it's good to have this for them as well, just in case. So let's go one by one. The Nearpod lesson code, that is the code that we are going to give to each team. And we will give this code to you as well in an email in the next couple of days. That is a code that the team will use to log in to the specific lesson that they're going to be joining uh, for the testing session. So. For example, this is the um, example code that we would be giving to you. Um, this is not the exact, exact one, but it's going to be something like this, a five character code. And this is the code that each team, specifically the scribe on the team, one person on the team, the scribe is going to go to nearpod.com and enter this code into this field right here, where it says students join a lesson and enter that code. So that's number one, the lesson code. Okay. Now, once they log into this Nearpod session, they're going to be uh, shown this page where it says, welcome to your lesson. There are two fields on this page that are very critical um, for the team scribe to enter in correctly for us to be able to track them and then match up their answers to the one that is being sent to the judge for their team. So one is called name. The other one is other optional name. So in the name field, what we want the team to enter, the scribe to enter is a unique code. Um, as Marilyn showed you earlier, uh, that unique code is, is going to be the same code that is on your Google sheet. Okay. That's another, uh, alphanumeric code that's specific for your team. That is absolutely critical that the team scribe enters that code in correctly. If they type it in correctly, good. If they don't, if they type in their personal name, the scribe's name or the team name or some other, um, string other than the actual team code that was assigned to that team code, what I'm going to be able to do is see the code that is entered in. And I will say, you know what? That's the wrong code. I'm going to remove them and I'm going to instruct that, um, you guys through the monitor supervisor and tell them, Hey, I had to kick the team off of Nearpod because, um, they logged into Nearpod incorrectly. So that's the first field. The second field is the other optional name. And that one is what you type, uh, the team scribe types into, um, with their team name. Now it's, um, we are going to provide the team name, um, in an email the same email that has a team code. Um, it may not be exactly the same as, you know, there's, there's so many different ways you can write your team name. So, um, but we will provide that information to you in the email. So, so for example, this, this is my team's name and they will join the lesson. Okay. Um, and it'll show up here in for us with a code, as a name and the other, it'll have the team name. This part is, is important so that we can match it up, but it doesn't have to be exactly correct. This is the most critical part. Okay. So those are the first three things in here. Um, if your team that you're monitoring is meeting, um, virtually fully virtually, then I would recommend you print this out 
and write down the meeting code, uh, Zoom meeting code and a pin and password if they need it, if you need it. The other piece, it's, I think this is applicable for both you, the monitor that's writing the answers into um, the Google Sheet and also the scribe. Make sure that um, the autocorrect functionality of your computer or device is turned off so that um, the computer doesn't accidentally, you know, change the change the word that you typed in to something else. The next one is um, this is so critical is you need to make sure however way possible hardwire connection is if possible is preferred, but whatever you need to do, you need to get a stable internet connection. Everything falls through if you don't have a solid internet connection. So you need to make sure however way you can get it, uh, get to a place that has a stable internet connection maybe a backup connection, a hotspot on your phone, whatever is needed, that's, um, that's critical. Another one is if your team is meeting virtually, make sure that you, um, you instruct your scribes on your team uh, to keep their webcam on the entire time. I think, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, Marilyn, but if your team is meeting in person and you're with that team, then this is not a, a, a requirement. That's correct. That's okay. a requirement if they're virtual. Right. Okay, um, moving on, the computer. So this is, uh, you'll see here, but it's gonna be an all day event. So make sure that the, if you're bringing a laptop or some other device, make sure that it's fully charged, one, but honestly, even if it's fully charged, um, it may um, it get to lie. a point where it's gonna uh, lose the battery. So make sure you have, you bring your, um, uh, the plug adapter, AC adapter, so that it's, it has power the entire time. Um, and then this is really not applicable to you guys. Okay. Uh, so now let's go to the schedule. Okay. All right. All right. On the schedule, as you mm -hmm. see, he has there, there's worship. Worship Friday night should be very good. The kids do not have to be in uniform. Um, and they can join from home. They don't have to be in a shared space. It will be the live stream on the website. And key, if you would bring up the, the yes. PB org live stream is right there in the middle. That's where the worship will be. Um, they have some good speakers lined up. So I think it'd be very worth it for the kids to see that. Let's go back to the schedule. The next thing you'll see is Sabbath morning. We start check-in at eight o'clock. Now, eight o'clock Eastern time. So you'll have to back up or go forward from that time to figure out when check-in is. Check-in lasts until 10.30. That's two and a half hours. Those of you on the East Coast, we prefer you guys to be early and the goes to the West Coast a little later. With 134 teams, we can't deal with all of you at the same time. So just kind of trickle in. But if you've never done this before, give yourself plenty of time. We only had 23 teams. For the, tech, for the Southwestern Union event, and it took us an hour and a half to get 23 teams in successfully, okay? It's amazing how many things get mistyped or connections get messed up or computers had to move. We even had a team that picked up and moved to a whole new location. Yeah, they went from their church to a near, nearby church member's house. A house, because uh, the house had better connection to the church yeah. that day for whatever reason. They'd done it at the church before, but all of a sudden it wasn't working. So they just picked up and moved to a house. Uh, so give yourself enough time. The team needs to give themselves enough time to make sure they've worked out any kinks. So there's two and a half hours there to do that. And that's for you to check in with the stuff I told you before, making sure you can get to the sheet, making sure you can get into the chat, that everything's done and that the, you're their advocate. So you're helping them if they get stuck or, and you're telling us, oh, they can't get in. They have this problem. Some of the common problems you might want to look for is if the scribe has too many windows open they should have nothing open on their computer but their nearpod and the zoom session if they're virtual okay if they're in the church it should just be the nearpod don't want to have lots of things open it might knock them off so you might give them some hints that goes for you also you should have your windows closed and if you're doing this from home please beg everyone in the household to not get on the internet and turn off any devices, even if they're, uh, the screen has gone to sleep, it's still going. It's still doing things. Try to power everything down that you can so that the bandwidth that you have at your house 
is just used for this. So, and I know it's Sabbath and, you know, somebody may want to watch Loma Linda Church. It's recorded. Watch it later. <laughs> have them please stay off. So you have the bandwidth because it does cause problems when people have, we've had kids who are working away and also they get knocked off because their sibling in the other room brought up a, a game. Okay. And it's just really important. These kids have studied so hard. Let's make it as best we can make it so they can succeed. So hey, Marilyn. Uh -huh. Marilyn, I'm sorry. There's just, there's a, a question in the chat that I think this would be a good time to just address for everybody. Okay. Um, it, it's asking if, um, the monitor could log into Nearpod for the scribe so that the scribe could come later. Um, it's, I, I don't think so. Because I think it needs to be the scribe and the director, not the monitor. Um, the, I, I think it, we, because if we have questions or need to talk to somebody, the monitor is not really in charge, right? He's not in charge yeah. of the group. They're there to observe and to help, but they're not in charge. So <laughs> The and, and another thing I think is, I mean, if you think of it as the actual event, the person that's sitting with the kids is not writing down the answers for the kids. The kids, the scribe, the team member needs to write the answer down. Mm -hmm. um, so there's, I mean, there's less potential for, oh, the, the team says, I said this, but the monitor wrote this instead. And there can be some um, right. discrepancy it, there. Sorry, sorry. Sorry, the question yeah. was just in the morning when when we start to show up, and then the scribe comes and find the computer set up already. Oh, well. It, so it, you're setting up the computer in the room, and it's all ready to go, but there's no kids there. Exactly. Um, and then that yeah. monitor is gonna. Sorry, the scribe is gonna use that computer. Exactly. Oh, I think that's. Yeah, that's fine. probably okay, yeah. except they, it's. As from this is my personal philosophy that yeah. has nothing to do with rules. I like to make enable the kids to be successful by allowing them to do the much as I can mm -hmm. themselves. There's a certain amount of personal growth that comes with doing things yourself and not having things done for you. But that's a personal philosophy. That has nothing yeah. to do with rules. <laughs> but I yeah, understand. Thank you very we much. Won't, we won't know who's actually doing the logging in. We'll just see the computer. Right. You know, so from our point of view, we won't know right. who actually did it. It just needs to be the same computer that is going to be used. Yes. That's what we will see. Yeah. All right. Thank okay. You. So 1030 is worship and it's going to be good. It's also going to be on the live stream on the website. Um, the kids should watch that. We really, it's a special program just for them. And we do encourage them to be there in time for that, the whole team to watch. Um, and then between 1130 and 12 is announcements. What's going to happen in that period, that's a half an hour, right? The kids can get a snack, something to eat, make sure they go to the bathroom, get themselves all ready the announcements that are made you know about different things gene will have some announcements about the rules and so on it'll be made during that time and we will double check that nobody's fallen off and we might check with the monitors again everything good to go you know it's just a a time we have for check-in and the kids to have a break from the worship before the testing so they can do the bathroom and eat food and whatever but as a monitor, you might want to have food too. <laughs> so think about this is a long day. And so you may want to have a lunch already prepared, a snack, a sandwich, you know, figure out what your food situation is going to be. So your stomach's not growling, which makes you grumpy as you, uh, when you're working with the kids. So that's in that half hour, that's what's going to happen. And then at noon Eastern time, the testing begins. Now I'm going to reiterate the testing is going to be through the reading of the questions through the webinar, which is found on the NAD website, NAD PBE, inside your logged in monitor session and inside the um, Teams. It's in two places, but it's not for the general public. This is what the Teams will be seeing. Now, there is going to be a live stream for family and friends, which will have a small corner, which sees what you guys are seeing, but there's going to be commentary, there's going to be questions and answers, there's going to be a program for the general public on the live stream that is not 
I'm going to say that again. That is not what the kids are going to want to see. Okay. The kids need to see the webinar where it's just the questions. They'll be read in English and Spanish. And then, and then part of the way through, it'll be Spanish, then English. But it'll just be the questions and answers, just like a normal PBE when we did it in person in the old days. Okay. So that goes on the same way. But make sure that what audio you're broadcasting or the audio the church is broadcasting is the webinar and not the live stream the live stream will be behind us and it will be not complete they won't be able to hear it it will be a disaster so very important that you're broadcasting the webinar and not the live stream um, and you will find it in that center section under division monitor access it'll be in there and it'll under division team access it'll be in those two places the director and the coach can get into the team the monitor can get into the monitor access that's the only places that webinar is going to be linked okay right just, so just to be 100 percent clear um there there were some questions this is the live stream this is the live stream that has the worship service and this is this link here will also have the live stream that has what Marilyn was talking about, where it's commentary, people talking about the um, you know Pathfinder uh, PBE, and um, and some portions of the testing will also be shown during during the live stream. This one is the one for the general public, not for the kids that are testing, and not for you guys, because this one there will be a delay of uh, 30 seconds or maybe even more. So you cannot um, depend on this live stream to be the source of the reading of the questions. If you do, then you're going to be behind. In here, in the division monitor access and the division team access, there will be a link to the, uh, to the webinar that has the real like live live stream that um, where the person that's reading the question We'll be able, you'll be able to hear them just like we're able to hear and see each other right now in, in the Zoom session. Similar concept where there's no delay. That's going to be your source of the reading of the questions. But this is for the general public. The webinar is really for um, the teams and you guys only. So let's go back to the schedule. So We'll be going along, we'll be doing testing. The testing does not stop. That's why you have to have backups. So think about your backups. At intermission, we've made it five minutes longer. It's 20 minute break, giving the kids time to go to the bathroom and get a snack. If they have questions to, uh, that they want to um, challenge, that's when they do that. If there's been an infraction, that's where you report that. So at those two times, so you may be busy those 20 minutes. So you might have a sandwich on the side <laughs> so because that is probably my guess from 12 to two roughly will be the first half. And from 2.20 to about five o'clock will be the second half. That's my guess. If life is smooth, that's our hope. Let me put it that way. That's our hope that that's how it works. When we're done with the test, we're done for the day. And on Sunday at two o'clock Eastern, we will be broadcasting in the live stream, the award ceremony and the placement of the clubs, of the teams, all right? So other little details that you need to be aware of. In the half hour between 11.30 and 12.30 is uniform inspection, but it's not gonna be a big uniform inspection. What we want you to do is make sure they have their dress shirt on, black pants or skirt, sash and scarf. We're not checking badges, we're not checking patches. That's already been done at lower levels. Jean just wants those to more things checked. Once that's done in your chat, you put the name of the team and say inspected or say done, you know, just give me a clue. So I'll just check, we'll just check them off. That, that's all been done. So, you know, you can do it ahead of time. And, you know, if the club's all ready to go, at 10 30 you can do inspection then it doesn't really matter i just would like it done before we start testing because once we start testing we're kind of busy and i can't be checking off people and stuff so in uniform inspection but it's very minimal it should take you very not very long if you're doing it 
when they're doing it virtual, just have them stand up so you can see their pant and, pants and skirt and they can, you know, they're standing there in front of you so you can do the rest pretty quick. Marilyn, can you repeat um, again the four items? And then that will also be on the website for them to, to remind them the day of, correct? I can add that to the website. It's not on there currently. Okay. <laughs> Just as a good reminder, but if you can, and if you could, uh, we have some requests to repeat those items one more time. Sure. Dress shirt, dress pants or skirt, sash and scarf. Just four things. Okay. They have their sash on, they have their scarf on, they have their dress shirt and their pants. We're not checking to see that their socks are black. We're not checking where their patches are. We're not doing any of that. Just those four major items, okay? And you just put it in the chat, such and such a club, inspect it, done, whatever. If uh, there are some clubs that the kids are new enough, they do not have dress shirt, black. There should be in a white shirt and black pants. I've had at least two clubs tell me that some of their members are new and getting uniforms has been challenging this year. So uh, they're not ready to go with that. And that's fine. They can be in those uniforms. So I think I've covered the majority of everything. So we're going to open it up for questions. If you would raise your hand, if you have a question, we'll be glad to take questions now. And if we have any in the chat, send those my way. Hey, Marilyn. So there was a, a point brought up in the chat that there may be some physically challenged kids um, participating who may not be able to sit still the whole time. Mm -hmm. And um, sort of an observation, but then also maybe some more advice on uh, how the monitors should handle that. If it's an in-person thing, they can sit or stand. So have them sit and have them stand, have them sit and have them stand. You know, they have to stay six feet apart, and so, but there's no rule that says you have to sit the whole time. If they're virtual, the rule is from the waist up has to be visible, but more than the waist up can be visible, but they shouldn't be on their bed sleeping and they shouldn't be in the back playing with their little toy cars. Okay, <laughs> they're supposed to be participating in the event. And we've had both of those infractions, just so you know, <laughs> that, has, that has happened in our uh, union. So uh, yeah, they, they, but there are some kids who get wiggly. That is very true. And you know, have them stand up and sit down, stand on one foot, breathe deeply, roll their shoulders, give them some, some advice before so that they know things to do. I was a very wiggly child, okay? I will tell you, I was always in trouble. I was always in trouble for being wiggly. And I had to learn that if I didn't wanna get in trouble, I had to figure out how to be wiggly without being in trouble. So then you got creative. So I know all the ways of how to be wiggly and not get in trouble. You know, my hands will do different things. Um, I'll just move them back and forth. I might have a little dance in my head, you know, you need a coping mechanism. So if a child is challenged because they have trouble sitting still, teach them some coping mechanisms so that they can function while they're doing it, okay? But don't say, oh, you gotta sit still. That's okay, they can wiggle. There's no rule against wiggling. There's a rule against not being on camera. <laughs> there's a rule of having, you know, going to sleep, but there's no rule that says you can't wiggle. There's another question. Oh, there's a hand up by Marvin. Oh, yes. I have two questions, actually. Okay. Uh, when will the Google Sheets be sent out? They should be going out tonight or tomorrow. Is right. the, it's all written. We were waiting for the last piece of data and it arrived today. <laughs> so it should be good to go tonight or tomorrow. Uh, and oh, which is a good point, though, you might not recognize the email address, it'll be coming from NAD PBE, and then it could be a 01, a 02, a 03, but the sender will be NAD PBE. So if you do not have the email by the end of day tomorrow, look in your junk mail. Okay. See that it's there. Okay. Try to try, try to find it. If you still don't find it, contact us and uh, I'm going to put my um email towards the end of the meeting in the in the chat so you guys can have my uh, email and said drop me a line and we will see what happened to your email it's usually what happens is the 
email address you were registered with is not mm -hmm. the email address you think you should be getting things on, especially those people who have multiple addresses. And Marvin, you had another question. Oh, him, yes. Uh, oh. Sorry. Uh, let me let me go back to the previous question. I'm sorry, Marvin. Hang on one second, please. Um, just to clarify what kids are allowed to do. There were a couple of questions about, you know, like if the kids need to draw or doodle to like help them focus, is that okay? As long as it's visible. Okay. Yeah. You know, if they have a blank piece of paper and they're doodling, that's fine. Fact is they do it during the regular PBE. I see kids with drawings all over their arms or oh, the yellow envelope that their stuff came in. They're drawing all over that. They're drawing on the back of the pad of paper. That's okay. You know, but it has to be visible. Okay, okay Marvin. Okay. Yes. Um, when the kids, I know in the last round, sometimes the kids, um, the time, the the, the uh, near part things, you know, the, the countdown mm -hmm. is done, and they're still, um, and sometimes they've they've had difficulties, or they couldn't type the answer, they couldn't type the answer into near part. Do I write the answer that I hear if they can see it? If, if, if the answer is given, but they didn't get the chance to, for whatever reason, type it into Nearpod. Do I, as a monitor, uh, write, type the answer in my sheet if they have given me the complete answer? No, and I'll tell you why. The judges are going to go by what came on Nearpod. They're only going to use yours if it's garbled or missing. So they're, the, even if you type the whole thing, they wouldn't get credit for it anyway. You are their backup and it is a timed test. And as a timed test, they need to be watching that timer that's telling them when the, you know, it changes colors 10 seconds before it's over. Watching. Now you are allowed to say 10 seconds because in a normal event, there is somebody that says 10 seconds. So if you want to help them out to remind them that their time is almost up, you can say 10 seconds, but the judges are going to go by what's in Nearpod unless it didn't come through at all okay. or it came through garbled. Okay. Marilyn, I did Marilyn, ask just, a, uh -huh. just a really quick thing on that. Um, if, if it appears that they are attempting to type it in and there's something going on with Nearpod that's not allowing it, uh, the monitors definitely need to type that in because right. that's part of what the Google Sheet is is there for. Right. So if there's a like their Nearpod is malfunctioning. Right. And right. If, if they if they have like one second left and then they blurt out the answer and then the timer goes to zero, well, that's equivalent to the actual testing. If somebody to, finds out the answer one sec with one second remaining. And they don't have time to write it down on the piece of paper because they always have to turn in the they paper ran, at ran the out time. Of time yeah yeah now i was asked at the last meeting to talk to gene about the length of time for the long answers because that seems to be the main issue and he said and i haven't talked to key yet because he it has been share. adjusted marilyn you did you did the adjustment okay it's good. A, it, yeah it was adjusted before it before it went into nearpod Okay, good. Because yeah, the, the really long answers, the seven, six, seven, eight pointers, mm -hmm. uh, Gene said to add uh, 15 more seconds. So uh, we're, we will give them a little more time at this level than we had before because of your concerns. So they will have a little more time. But yeah, I think it's a great idea if the monitors say 10 seconds, because sometimes they're so busy discussing or arguing or whatever it is they're doing that they don't keep track of the, the time. So if you give them 10 seconds, they're like, oh, yeah, I got to go do that. All right. Does that answer your question, Marvin? Yes. Yes, you did. Thank you. OK. And then next we have Bing. Uh, before that, yeah. can, I, can I just uh, show one thing? There was oh, sure. a question in the chat about Nearpod. Um, basically, not um, maybe some of the kids typing in the answer and clicking on, on submit too quickly. So what, what I'll show you is, let's say I type this in as a team member, and then I click on submit. And if, as long as there's still time remaining, they can still go back and edit the answer and change it to something else. Whatever they enter in and, sub and, and then they could do it as many times as they want, as long as there's still time remaining. Um, now at the end, if, 
if they type something in and then they don't finish what they're typing in and they don't click on submit and time is up, it's still okay because whatever was in that field, when the timer went to zero, that is what is going to be submitted to Nearpod and subsequently to the judges. So um, the teams don't need to worry about that. Right. Okay. Okay. So Bing. Yeah, Nadine kind of answered this question in the chat already, but we had big problems when they had the Lake Union testing. And what helped us tremendously was having a dry run before the actual test. Saved us a lot of time in getting the groups together. Are we having a dry run? I, Nadine says he's going to have a dry run sometime this week. Uh, you have an idea when it's going to happen? Okay, we're not doing a dry run, but your union can do a dry run. In other words, we have no time slots left to do a dry run. Every evening has meetings with some group. Uh, so we've expected the that the union level, that everybody did this process at least once, that all the clubs have done more or less this process. And I know that um, Atlantic Union is doing a dry run today. Uh, so your union can do a dry run if you would like, uh, but the NAD will not be running a dry run. So I take it that the union will be using the same platforms that we will be using for the testing this weekend. They should. They've been given all the information, <laughs> but right. okay. I, I don't That's know fine. for sure. Yeah. That's fine. Thank you. Uh -huh. And then we have Daniel. Hello, Daniel. Yeah, sorry. I was muted. <laughs> uh, okay, I have a question. Um, the director of my team, uh, she provided this uh, link so I can attend to this uh, session that I think was very informative. Uh, she just mentioned that the Google chip will be sent to today, tonight, tomorrow. Mm -hmm. uh, but the question I have is this, I haven't registered, so my email, I'm not sure if she provide my email to register as monitor. So if she hasn't provided that, where can I register? Isn't an NAD PBE uh, web page or what? No, other? Uh, but every team has a monitor registered. So Nadine, okay. she has a, she's well, been checking. Well, no, so, so Marilyn, uh, going off of that, there have been some other comments in the chat that there um, are probably some updates needed to the list of monitors from what we had at the NAD level. So okay. um, some, some have been coming in. So if they, the best way to maybe capture those is to send an email like right it now. It is re-register re -register on the, the same link we had for registration. Just register the new person. If there's a change in person or change in email, just use okay. the same so registration. Monitor, link. Okay. Yeah. So Daniel, okay, cool. there's the registration link you should have received or your uh, conference people received, they should have passed down to you. What club are you with? Or are it you monitoring? Chosen Team B uh, in North Carolina Conference. They were just registered today. They were okay. one of my, they were, today I got you the registration about three o'clock today. They were my last one. We've been hunting <laughs> down registrations <laughs> for the last oh, three yeah. days by my, my orphan children. Cause I wanted to make sure every single team had a monitor. It's like, oh, I have one left. <laughs> so, okay, good. So, so, so that means my, my email should be registered already. Yeah, it should be registered. But if there's okay. a change, just re-register. Okay. Okay. Thanks. The, the person, and we will pick those up. Um, the stuff has already been sent to Kevin for the monitors, so it will be a second go round for Kevin when we give him the monitors of anybody who comes in late. But uh, I think that's okay, right, Kevin? Yeah, I'm, I'm going. Yeah. Oh, I can't hear you. There you go. Um... I'm going to wait till tomorrow. So if you get some tonight, mm -hmm. very early in the morning, uh, you can send me an updated spreadsheet. Okay. I'll try to do it before work. Yeah. And, uh, so that should be okay. So you heard it here first. <laughs> if you need to register somebody else, go to the, get the link and you go ahead and register. And we will get them to Kevin. Chester. And Marilyn, I'm sorry. The um, assistant monitors or monitor helpers, they need to register so that we have their email, ideally. They can. 
they don't have to because since they're working with you, you can share whatever information we gave the main monitor that information. Some unions have chosen to give us a second person. Some unions have chosen not to. It's totally up to however union wants to do it. If it comes in, we will send the emails to them. If it doesn't come in, share it uh, with them. Because you really only need one person in the chat. You shouldn't both be in the chat. Uh, only one person in the Google Sheet. So it should be you or your assistant. So it really doesn't matter which one. As long as you've got the email, got the link, log in the way it tells you to go into the chat. So just need one person. So I don't need that second person, but if it gets sent in, we will send them information and get their login in there. But the Google sheet will only be accessible by the person who is registered, whose email that we have. The, Google, the Google sheet is locked down um, except where they type and it is registered to the link that is sent. So it's link activated, not login activated. So it's the link you get that is critical. Don't use somebody else's link. It'll take you to the wrong page, <laughs> okay? The link is what is important in the case of the Google Sheet. So if you are not the person typing, share the link we send you with them and they will get to the right sheet. In, in uh, relation to assistance, I think that is important that they be registered. And the reason being is if they're both logged, if you have an assistant and the monitor, uh, both logged in under the monitor's name and all of a sudden the monitor becomes unaccessible. Maybe, you know, we know who's a, talking in the, in the chat. Uh, as a backup, uh, it, it's totally up to the union. You know, they don't have to have an assistant. And I think about half of the half of the teams will not have an assistant. Okay. So, but if they have one and they want them to log in with their own credentials, send us the information. Uh, we will pass it along. We before know, we before uh, before tomorrow afternoon. <laughs> well, before tomorrow morning, because I'm going to yeah. do it before I go to work. <laughs> yeah. So it needs to be tomorrow morning. Yeah. All right, uh, Chester. Uh, I'm Marilyn. How you doing? Uh, just quickly, um, it. Uh, it appears that uh, some teams may have uh, misunderstood and they have sent in individuals as monitors uh, while the conference